Hey guys, what's up? In this video, I'm super excited to talk about Webflow's conference 2024. In my opinion, it was a really exciting conference and I just want to quickly go through all of the updates that we saw in this particular conference. There's a lot, so I'm going to be going through this quickly so people can get the most out of this video. The first thing that they introduced in this conference was new product navigation. So you have design, build and edit tabs directly within Webflow's interface, not outside of it in the dashboard. So if you go to your interface, as you can see directly at the top left, you have these drop down options which allow you to switch between these three tabs. You also can see your CMS panel there. You can actually see analytics there as well, which we're going to talk about later. And you see the play button. In the middle, you can also see that okay the locale is english it's you're on the home page you're on the desktop and stuff along those lines on the right you can see comments and some of the other stuff that we can obviously talk about as well and the publishing and share buttons uh, what's additional here is these different um, editing capabilities are going to have different URLs. So if you want to point your clients or anyone else to a specific URL, you can go ahead and do that. And that's not going to be an issue. So similarly, you can also see where you are at what particular stage you are, which locale you're viewing just by looking at the top bar in the center. So that's amazing. So this new navigation is going to be available. They mentioned this year. I'm imagining it's probably going to be by the end of this year. And we're going to start having a look and see how this actually feels. The next thing that they talked about was variable uh, grouping, which obviously I think everyone pretty much has access to. So obviously you have groups, you can go ahead, sort variables within those groups and stuff along those lines. So that's there. And I think it's a good feature. But now they've introduced component style variants, which I feel like is a game changer uh, for Webflow, because obviously this particular feature is available in Framer, it's available in Figma and some of the other tools. I'm not sure why it was not available, but now you can easily go ahead, create variants within the same component without without actually duplicating them. And in your designs, you can easily switch between these variants, which I felt like was a missing feature. Now we have AI, basically AI, Webflow's AI. What this allows you to do, it allows you to feed it your design system. It doesn't use your data to train it, but now you can go ahead, use it to actually create different sections using it. And it's gonna actually create these sections with the design system stuff that you have. So as you can see now here, you do your fonts, your text, your sizing, your even your spacing in some cases is actually using the design system. You can also go ahead to ask it make to updates to cards to make them, let's say, different colors and stuff along those lines. So that's amazing. Here, this is amazing. You have multiplayer mode now, similar to Figma, similar to some of the other tools. You can have two people directly editing the same thing at the same time and build pages, which is amazing. They also talked about design approvals, but they didn't really show much about it. But again, it's available today for enterprise. So you can have a look at that as well. They also mentioned that they have already made a bunch of updates in CMS, like for example, increasing the limits in, and doing uh, having the CMS APIs and stuff. But now they're introducing bulk CMS APIs, which would allow you to modify, to do things with your APIs in bulk, which I think is gonna be a useful feature, not for us, obviously for sm not small people, but I guess like larger organizations. Um, here, they also mentioned that with AI, you can go ahead and actually generate completely new CMS items. So they can go ahead and actually generate a completely new CMS talk uh, item using AI. It's gonna basically fill that data automatically based on the suggestion that you give it. And very similar to what Notion and some of the other tools do, you can actually ask AI to generate headlines and stuff along those lines and update text, which is I think obviously pretty straightforward. So you can have sections, you can have text updates and stuff along those lines. So AI Assistant is in beta starting today. So if you're in uh, the beta program, you would probably have access to it. So that's amazing. Uh, very similarly, you can also publish CMS updates individually, which I think is a pretty big deal. So if your design team is working on certain things, but you don't really want to publish that, you can individually publish CMS items, which I think is a very useful feature. Previously, they also obviously had the ability to nest CMS items, but the nesting of the CMS items uh, was limited. You cannot show, I think, more than five items or something along those lines, but now you can. You can have nested elements at, in the CMS at scale. So you can basically go ahead and actually use this feature, which is probably going to be available at the end of this year. They also made some localization updates, which basically means that previously they supported less locales, but now they're obviously increasing that locale uh, support to a few more or a bunch more. So I guess for those who are concerned about locality, that is good. One other amazing thing that I personally feel like is introduced is the ability to have localized styling. So now you can go ahead and actually say, hey, I want this particular text to be on two lines, but 
since uh, this text in a particular locale is smaller, I want to increase my font size. So I can go ahead and do that in a particular locale, which I think is amazing and it's available. The other thing that they also mentioned is form box, uh, like in the form, you can actually see where that particular form is connected and you can have bots being blocked as well and spam being filtered, which is amazing. So you don't get overloaded with a bunch of stuff coming your way. So that's good. You can pause these videos if you wanna focus on something. We have analytics by Webflow, which is basically uh, a competitor to, you can imagine Google uh, analytics, and you can see all of your analytics by demographics, by country, by visits to particular pages and stuff along those lines. And you can have a look at that, which is amazing. You can even have a look at analytics of a specific page as well by going to that particular page. Uh, I think I saw that in the video. They also introduced Webflow Auto Auto Optimize, which actually links to the analytics so once you are aware of the analytics you can even create a b tests directly using optimize and what's that's going to allow you to do you basically have two variations or multiple variations and in one variation you can go ahead update your components update global elements even like headers and stuff along those lines you can update let's say the text as well and stuff along those lines and you can create audiences as well so you can create audiences using devices you can their location using a bunch of different variables and you can say hey if a person does something like this, I want you to do this, I want you to do that. If their sessions are like this, I want you to show them this, whatever it is, amazing stuff in my opinion. I haven't really tested it out, so I don't know the full capability. You can also integrate various sources of data directly into Optimize, so I think that's gonna be great as well. Uh, some other things that they introduced is AI Optimize. So with AI Optimize, that was just Optimize. Now we have AI Optimize. What AI Optimize is going to allow you to do, it's gonna allow you to basically, it's gonna do all of the heavy lifting for you. So with this particular AI Optimize, what you can start doing is you can create multiple variations of things directly in Webflow and AI is just gonna do the heavy lifting for you. So if you update, let's say text in a few places, then it's gonna create a bunch of variations for that and it's gonna keep on testing those variations to see which performs the best. So this is what the AI optimized dashboard is gonna look like. So imagine you have different funnels as well, who's coming from page search, who's coming from direct nav, who's coming from organic search, how the variations perform with respect to all of these different entries and all of that stuff is directly going to be here as well, which is amazing. It's also gonna see the performance uh, over time and it's even gonna allocate certain of the these different types of variations based on uh, how it's performing. We also have the ability to request payments from clients directly in Webflow, which I think is amazing. Uh, so you don't have to go to a separate platform and stuff. You can basically just directly request that from the client. The other thing you can obviously have is seamless transfer. So obviously you can have your clients assigned to different types of roles. That's pretty straightforward, but you have seamless transfers as well. So you can get an email, a person can directly go there. They can accept the site transfer and that's pretty much it. That's how it can happen. So. Straightforward, but it's good. They also talked about project fees to be introduced. We don't really know what that is, but that's gonna be there hopefully soon as well. Uh, next year, sorry, project fees particularly. So these are just some of the updates that they introduced, but some of the mo one of the most amazing updates is actually this, which is Webflow partnering with GSAP. So Webflow acquired, I think, uh, Greenstack or whatever that company is that GSAP runs on, and they GSAP is going to be now tightly we can imagine more tightly integrated with Webflow. So these are just all of the updates that you can see that Webflow conference introduced, which I think are amazing. And I'm really looking forward to actually trying these out myself. So definitely do subscribe, do hit the bell icon. And I'm looking forward to seeing you for the actual time when we actually go through these tools. I teach a lot of tools on my channel and I think you're gonna find them valuable. So take care.